All right. Uh, two. My my left. Everybody knows that's Jason. Mm-hmm. Hello. Bottom corner. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm the director, Anthony Saldana. Yes. We uh, made a film called Straight Off the Canvas. And uh, I guess for anybody who doesn't know, Anthony, maybe we should just uh, inform them on what the film is about. Sure. Okay. So uh, Straight Off the Canvas is, a, is really about a, a story of numerous artists who love painting. They love sharing their joy of art. And it's really about community. The thing though, is that our subjects all have visual impairments mm. or, or are 100% blind. Wow. I really try to use my art to tell my story. My art is an expression of who I am it's an expression of line, shape, color, and my experience with those things. I use art to find my place in a diverse and global world. My art is a journey. I'm not sure where I'm going with my art until I get there. It's really about the dialogue that I have with the experiences I have in my life on a daily basis. It tells a story of who I am, where I've been, what I'm doing today, and where I'm going tomorrow. And, and, and this story developed over, over the last decade. You know, I, you know I, can I tell a story about how this whole journey began and, and like what, we're because I could spend the next hour talking about this journey, but I'll, I'll kind of condense it if if I'll try my best to, and you can uh, chime in at any point if you want to. Sure. Um. So this basically, I, I want to basically tell the journey if I can uh, of my experience of of directing uh, straight off the canvas. Uh, Jason and I, we we met each other and we we graduated from queen's college in 2008 oh and, yes uh we quit very quickly after that uh jason went off to grad school and i was like jason i need to find a job and uh i found a job working for a company and uh one of my co-workers at that company was deaf and i was and the first week working with her not realizing that she could read my lips and understand me understand what oh. under like i didn't realize what did you say it's not the point of what i uh, it, <laughs> uh, but i i i was especially during those first two weeks i decided should i le- try to learn sign language so i could co- le- you know communicate with my coworker. but then i just realized that she could understand every word that I was saying by ju- me just, and it was fascinating to me. So one day I was we, like, we were posted together and she just wouldn't talk to me. She was, she was, and uh, I was like, wow, she really can't understand me. And uh, I was just thinking about different pro, you know, like I, when I get bored, Jason knows that I, I start thinking of ideas. And I said, you know, I don't know, if, you know, me, uh, doing a, a documentary about a, a deaf woman, maybe. But then I said, well, blind people. Well, blind people. I wonder how blind people perceive art. And that was just uh, something that I was I was uh, asking myself in boredom. And I picked up a book. Uh, I just want to see if this is accurate. I believe his name was Andrew Potok. And he was a painter out in in Maine, and uh, he was he was became blind after he had uh, a a uh, a great art career, and that really affected him personally because uh, he didn't want he wanted to you know resolve his illness. And went through extreme lengths to to resolve that. And when I read that book, that was just, you know, I don't know if I ever told you that, but that was a moment when, oh, this is, you know, 
doing a documentary about blind uh, people, there's a responsibility that I as a filmmaker have because I'm not blind and I'm telling a blind story. Outside looking in, yeah. Right. So, you know, that's why it was so important to uh, to direct and produce We're Ordinary People about the blind activists in New York City, about what blind people what it's like being blind and and what do blind people need living in the diverse city of New York City. Yeah, what are, what issues are they most concerned with? Right, right. So basically the idea of how do blind people perceive art and researching that idea led me to to understand that I had to produce a film about what blind people need as an opportunity to meet blind people and make friends and and great gain credibility in, in a field you know i felt like i had to do a project about what blind people need so that i can get the opportunity to do a project about what i i was interested in so the the documentary that i did 10 years ago were ordinary people open the door straight off the canvas because straight off the canvas would never have been produced without we're ordinary people. Absolutely. I mean, I was, I was, I was there for all of the projects and yeah, this is a idea that's been a long time coming. Right. And um, you know, when we started doing we're ordinary people, I think we were really, getting I would say getting our feelers out there into the blind community and trying to get down to um I think in the first episode we kind of scratched the surface you know we, we touched on physical things that you know would concern the blind community what are some of the myths like the stereotypes that they confront every single day um and then we went even further with the second film which was about um, being blind and dealing with the, um, I would say, daily struggle, quote unquote, of being blind, especially a spiritual, right. you know, spiritual struggle. I realized uh, basically, yeah. I, 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 and I could, I could have done this in one film, but I realized that the question was so deep that I had to devote a second hour to to the idea that that you can you can have a disability and wake up one day and decide that you are going to be on the front lines for your community and fight for the rights of your community but absolutely but mm -hmm. before you get to that level mentally you have to accept the fact that this is your life yeah and and that's why we did you know i did a second uh project like a part two which is which is stand alone where you know just focusing on on the spirituality of accept, accepting your illness well i wouldn't even say illness you know i would or, say because illness is you know i'd say broad. Accepting, it's broad it's broad yeah accepting um and the thing is, is that um, I think it was an excellent, excellent form of preparation to delve into this deep issue of can blind people, um, how do blind people perceive art? You know, not only, uh, and I think we went even further with this film because we were just going in here with how do blind people perceive art? And I think we came out with not only the answer to that question, but also the fact that Blind people can also make art, which is a completely different than just perceiving art. Making art is something completely different. And we have it on video camera, video evidence. We've seen the students at Lavelle School for the Blind, you know, in the Bronx, in, in the Whitehead section of the Bronx, um, that there were students who were blind and were painting, you know. And so they're not just perceiving. They are also creating art. And I think this film kind of was acting as a, as a way to take that concept you had 
and bring it even further. Because we could we could talk about art history all day, you know, but it's right, it's 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 much different coming from someone who's not just an art historian, but an artist themselves, someone who makes art for a living. You know, so seeing that there were people who were visually impaired who create their own art was very, was, I would say, it was, it was more than just intriguing. It was very surprising. Right. And it, I'd say it was not, it was an excellent journey to see um, people who could express them, who were expressing themselves through art. And one of the best things I would say is for those nonverbal students who really didn't have another outlet to express themselves, they can do so through art. It's providing them a way to express themselves. Even though they, they physically can't, there is a way for them to express themselves. Yeah, and yeah, I was very yeah. impressed. And, and uh, there were a lot of components to the film that I had to put together, you know, and uh, the components really was Elizabeth Axel from uh, Art Beyond Sight. Right. And Sarah Valerie, who is in the field as an art therapist uh, working with blind children. And Elizabeth Castellano, who at the time was a an art teacher as well as mm -hmm. an artist. And I just realized, I really, really, really wanted to, as Jason said before, we got this... We got to, to videotape blind children working with art and the process of of be, being able to, to film that was was important to us. So to finally get a yes from Lavelle School of the of of the blind and which took almost about a year, if I remember. Uh, it was more than that. Uh, ah, and, yes. And Jessica Jones, because without Jessica Jones or the Lavelle School. Oh, absolutely. Without yeah. Jessica Jones in Lavelle School of the Blind, like them saying yes was the green light to making this, taking the film and giving it so much more substance and, and texture. And like, I would have never, we would have never stopped until we got a yes, even if we had to leave New York and find a, a program that would agree to let us do, you know, yeah spotlight their program so uh the point i'm trying to make here is uh that as a filmmaker sometimes you know hearing the word no is just an opportunity to find someone else that's going to say yes and i'm so grateful that jessica jones and the lavelle school for the blind were open for us to highlight their their school and uh we hope that that the film will be able to spotlight the Lavelle, Lavelle school for the blind for many years and decades to come because the story holds up and and can hold up for years to come yeah you know that can do what for a dog? Did you know that when that when you put on the ground, yes. a dog okay. can eat it and it, it'll get all over. When you spill it on a dog, mm -hmm. it'll get all over and it'll be white. You are so correct. Again, the second brilliant thing you've said today, Turn Mr. Pratt. And that happens to Willie quite a bit. He turns white a lot of times when we're doing plaster in the art room. You are correct. You know, I think with this film, it was very insightful because, you know, it's not just a group of blind people. You get to really appreciate their personalities and their various personalities. Mm -hmm. And what I think you really highlighted that when you talked about their different takes on things, on subjects in art, like color and, um, you know, it, it really sh highlighted their different ways of approaching art right. and how they create art as a person you know and i think that's one of the reasons it was so important to have component sections like that in the film 
one other thing that that I never imagined during this 10 year journey was that the two of us had so many personal struggles during that that journey. Um, oh, yeah, that I now consider myself part of the disability community. Before I start started the film, I didn't. Me but too. Life circumstances yeah. have led me to be a part of a chronic pain community. Mm -hmm. And uh some sometimes, you know, at first I didn't want to accept it. And as I was going through the process of making a film, now I can talk about it that I live in chronic pain. And it's just a part of who I am, but that's, I'm not going to let that stop me from producing and doing what I love. It's not entirely who you are. Correct. Yeah. I know. Um, you know, having, I, I learned, I learned, you know, when I had, when I was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder, you know, I thought it was just a psychological, you know, psychological illness. And as I had applied for work at the time, I was surprised to learn that it is considered a disability. Um, they do have it on the list of disabilities, um, but it, you know, after going through it, I, you know, when I look at the news now, and I think it really helps shape how we view things. And I think it gives us more of an empathetic um, attitude towards people who do struggle with disabilities because now we've struggled with it we know we have an idea of what it is and you know not every disability is the same no and like just like not every person is the same but i think it gave us an idea into what kind of a daily struggle and i would also say overcoming that people with disabilities face uh, you know, on a daily basis. And I think without our, this kind of like empathetic attitude where, you know, yeah, I can sympathize. Um, I don't think we would get as far as we did with all three of these films. I think as we met these people and I think in a way for me, I don't know about you, but me personally, I was inspired by everyone we filmed. Oh, to see sure. not only a matter of overcoming, but a matter of how their character has been but, shaped in so, such a positive way. So this was, and 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 I go back again to you know I'll I'll, I'll, I'll awesome. piggyback yeah. off of what you just said in terms of inspiring. Um, I'll go I'll go more in depth into into what I said about myself. So uh, I was scheduled to uh, do my first interview with with uh, Elizabeth in in January of 2012. So I call her on the phone and I have to now cancel the interview because I think I might have a broken back. And mm, um, I remember that night. And yeah. so, so I call her and I, I explain to her my situation. I say, listen, I, I have injured my back and I need to, you know, cancel the, the, the interview. And before I can even get the words out of my mouth, she said, I hurt my back. And Wow. Yes. I remember so that. It then became a conversation of us comparing our back injuries and us, we were like, this is not much it. like war. Wounds. This is not it. We are, we have to finish what we started and we can't. Our goal has not yet been reached. Right. We, we can't just let the injuries that we're facing stop us from completing mm -hmm. what what we had already talked about so to then film her painting and talking about painting get it you know helping her with her with her injury as well as cope helping her cope mentally with that issue was so therapeutic for her it's just time to myself 
that it's just me and my art and I'm working out an idea or a concept um, or a theme. And it really just kind of helps direct me and, and where I am and where I'm going. And, and what's good about art for me is that art has always been a constant in my life. I've always loved it ever since I was that kindergarten kid, friends with Kathy and watching her draw. And I like that because no one can take that away from me. You know, you feel like when you have something happen to you where you're hurt and you can't go back and teach in a classroom anymore because your body won't let you, that something was taken from you. A part of you is not there that was before. But in terms of art, nobody can take that from me because it was always a part of me and I can still do it. I can still physically stand in front of that easel or sit in front of that easel and hold the paintbrush and do it. I was always an artist when I was young and I'll be an artist until the day I die. But for me, filming her painting was therapeutic for me and my injury. So it was really a beautiful circle and I, and I hope that you enjoy our film. I really do. For everyone out there, I think one of the most important things you can take away from this film is that um, art is some art is more than just a visual medium. You know, we've worked in media for a very long time. And well, I'd say a pretty long time, a decently, a decent amount of time. And you'd be surprised, it's not just visuals, it's not just, you know, a visual sense needed to appreciate art. Art is an experience, and it just it transcends just one sense. And I think sp speaking of people who make art, I mean, we make art, you know, our our art is on video. Um Art, it's, it's really philosophical to think of art because now art isn't just this random class that you take in school and then you don't have to take it again. You know, it's, it's this experience where you can now express yourself and people can experience that expression in so many different ways. I mean, when you have a sculpture, for example, in a museum and, you know, I, we can appreciate it by sight, but someone who is blind will appreciate that sculpture through touch, you know, and they feel that contour of, you know, that, that amount of um, precision in their sculpting where they feel, oh, this is a very smooth, yes, this is very well done, very well crafted sculpture. Um, so I think art really transcends just a visual sense. And I think we provided doc documented proof in this, um, film that proves art art truly is a a complete experience it's not just something to just be looked at it's an experience in and of itself so uh, straight off the canvas will be premiering in in the Bronx on this upcoming Tuesday, February 9th at 9 p.m. But if you don't live in the Bronx, like I, I don't live in the Bronx. On Bronxnet, yeah. Jason does not live in the Bronx, but you can go to bronxnet.tv at 9 mm -hmm. p.m. Eastern time and you can watch straight off the canvas. I, um, you know, when we were working on this film, it was truly a journey because I think that um, one of the most exciting parts of, of filmmaking, what we do as artists, I think there's always a tendency to see art as something that's not really necessary to society, especially if you talk, if you look at it in terms of economics, but it does provide such an importance to society. I think it really speaks to the human condition and gets us to think about, you know, ourselves in a deep way where we can um, really analyze 
maybe some of the flaws we have as humans, maybe some of the positive qualities we possess. Um, it helps us in a way look at ourselves and get a better idea of who we are, not just as a species, but as individuals. Right. And in a country that promotes, you know, which promotes individuality, art is an extremely valuable medium. We are CUNY alumni. We met at Queens College. Mm -hmm. In Flushing. In Flushing, Queens. And now we are airing our documentary on CUNY TV, CUNY TV. and Bronxnet. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And more to come. Definitely. Uh, we have submitted our documentary in numerous film festivals throughout the country. And... Uh, we've won a couple of awards for it through competitions yes. uh and i'm just going to list them out we won a spotlight documentary award a accolade global film yep competition award in disability issues and documentary feature a impact docs award for it, disability issues and documentary feature and lastly a Indie Fest Award for Disability Issues and Documentary Feature. I think we're off to a great start. I think so too. Yep. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, you know, when uh, if you get a chance, tune in to the documentary and get to see it live. Um, and of course, we have an email for the film, right? Yes, we, we have. Do. Um, a Gmail, if we would love to hear your feedback of what you thought of it. Um, it's straight off canvas at gmail.com, is it not? It is straight off canvas at gmail.com. We're also okay. going to be working on a, on a website that will be coming up soon. And mm -hmm. uh, we're also on Twitter. You can, yes. add, you can add us at straight canvas, at straight canvas. That's us. Mm hmm. And we would appreciate any feedback you can give us. You know, um, we really want to, we're really hoping that this film reaches out and inspires people the same way it's inspired us. You know, and I think it would be a job well done if if it does so with with many people. Um, I couldn't even say how many. You know, we'll have to just let the audience decide for themselves. And um, hopefully you enjoy the story as much as we enjoy the story.